Hi guys, it's Mary. It's been so long I forgot how to film. <laughs> it took me like a solid 10 minutes to figure out how to start filming with this camera, which is not a good sign. Uh, I'm getting old. Um, I can blame it on my mom brain, but yeah. So um, today I will try and film a video because it's the first time I'm trying to film in the bedroom while the baby is sleeping in the other room with my mom. So hopefully she'll stay asleep. Um, but it's been so long. Hi. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I was pregnant um, with my second child. And I didn't really read during my pregnancy this time. I remember the first pregnancy, I read a lot. Um, this time around, I didn't have time, I didn't have the energy, I was very tired. I was tired of the first pregnancy too, but this one was a bit different. Um, so I really, the only, the only books that I managed reading basically were books about pregnancy, childbirth and babies, you know, that, that those sorts of books that I always read anyway, but I wanted really to focus on my pregnancy and especially the process of birth, which it is something that I didn't do the first time around and I really regretted it. So um, I wasn't really able to read a lot of fiction. Um, and so I wanted to try and wrap up the year um, in filming two videos. One is gonna be this one where I talk a little bit about what's been happening um, and then and the books about pregnancy and childbirth and you know parenting in general um, and then I'm gonna have another separate video about the fiction that I managed to read um, from the last wrap-up that I filmed which was probably in July June July um, up until the end of the year I didn't read much um, and this year didn't start out uh, that well because of course being a new mom uh, with two kids it's hard to read and in the evenings I'm just very tired so um, yeah that's what's been happening I started the year with a book that I wasn't really enjoying and that I couldn't DNF for some reason because I've gotten so good at DNFing but this I couldn't so it took me like two months to read and then in March I really started reading um, and then I thought yeah let's get things going in my um, channel too so my second child was born on the 27th of October she is called Minerva, um, that's her name. People think that I named her after Minerva McGonagall. I know that I can't pronounce Minerva in a English, you know, just a, yeah, English sort of accent because Minerva to me is also an Italian name, you know. Um, but yeah, she isn't named after her. Um, she, the first time when I, um, when I was pregnant the first time, I was reading this book in the time of the butterflies, um, and by Julia Alvarez, I think it's the name of the author. I didn't really like the book that much because I don't like novels about real people, but it was talking about uh, the Mirabal sisters, which were three um, revolutionary uh, women from the Dominican Republic um, that were fighting the regime and. It was such a wonderful and interesting story. Um, I mean, Nerva was the oldest of the sisters uh, and I just fell in love with her name, with her in general, but her name too. I'm sorry, I propped the, um, the tripod on the bed, so it's not probably the best setting. Um, but yeah, so I really, we, me and my husband really liked the name and I thought if, if it's a girl, we're gonna call her Minerva, but then he was a boy. Um, so Leonardo was born and now, yeah, now I had a girl, we had a girl um, and she's called Minerva. I don't know why I sort of wanted to point that out, but yeah, I, I was saying this time around, I wanted to focus on the process of birth. Um, and so I read a lot about that, um, especially because I had a home birth this time. Um, the first time I went to the hospital, um, I romantically thought about home home births, but I wasn't really keen on, on trying that, my first experience. Um, but then I didn't have a great experience in the hospital. Um, 
it wasn't bad completely bad it wasn't completely bad but it wasn't what i wanted um, from this experience and so i started um thinking about a home birth we started thinking about a home birth this time around and here in my country is not that um, common i know it depends where you live but here it's not that common to have a home birth um and so it's not something that i really told a lot of people just my you know close friends and family they were all very supportive um and it was an amazing experience i really can't express how I felt um, because I really felt like this time I owned the process. The first time around I felt like birth was something that was happening to me and I wasn't making that happen um, and most of it is because I didn't have the right state of mind. I wasn't really myself. I mean you're not really yourself when you're in a lot of pain of course but I don't know. Um, a little bit because I wasn't expecting that kind of pain um, and maybe I had some arrogance in myself where I thought yeah, of course I can manage it um, everybody does I don't know I was trying to um, probably just to believe in myself but I couldn't um, and when I realized that I I wasn't managing it the right way I started panicking the first time and this time I didn't I knew what was coming so of course because it's the second time it's the second um time that happened so i knew how s sort of how it was going to be i know that every birthing experience is different but still i had more confidence and i also was trying to really concentrate on the pain instead of um wanting that to go away so i don't want to talk about my birth this is not a birth story sort of video but this is because i think books were very useful to me um and i know that a lot of people say that books are not useful um for you know real life experiences because when you're there you don't think about the books that you read but actually what i read sort of stayed with me and helped me during the birthing experience so the books about birth specifically that i read were this was the essential home birth guide um by jane e drikta cpm and jodeline owen cpm and this is a very practical book which has nothing to do with what i just said um but it was very useful um and i think this one is very good even if you don't plan on having a home birth um because it doesn't really convince you that is the best thing ever it's just a very honest um, look on on pregnancy in general, all the the issues you can you can encounter while you're pregnant, all the questions you might have about anything really regarding pregnancy. Um, so I really love that it was about pregnancy and birth in a very general way, but with the home birth in the back of of, of your mind basically. So I thought this was very uh, useful. Uh, in terms of having something practical to prepare yourself with even though of course I have I had my midwife um, that was telling me that told me everything that I needed to to have ready to have the home birth so definitely recommend it this one if you're planning to have a home birth or if you're not and then I read a couple of books on the process of birthing which are sort of similar so i i wouldn't know which one to recommend really more than the other because i think they were both useful for me um in different ways um so first there is birthing from within um by pam england and rob horowitz and again i would really recommend both of these even especially if you plan to have a home birth but even if you're planning to give birth in the hospital because you know you're still the the protagonist of your birth even though you're in a hospital um, and i think these really help you concentrate and just think about the process instead of running away from it because usually when you're having pain you want it to stop um, but there is a kind of pain that is useful in this case this is probably the only time where pain is really useful and it really helps you um, be mindful of the process so i think for me this was really the key to just not run away from the pain 
but own the pain, you know? Uh, and I know it sounds weird maybe when I say that, but it really helped. Um, and this has lots of experiences and just also like parts um, that the partner can read to help you out. Um, and it has also a lot of activities, which I didn't do at all. I hate these sort of things, um, but they're very, like if you're the kind of person that likes those kinds of activities, um, I don't know, like drawing, it's very artsy, this book. Um, it really, yeah, there's a lot about drawing and just crafting things. Um, so if you enjoy the, the, that kind of things, I think it's very uh, good for that. But also it was very useful in general. Um, and, and this is more, this is mindful birthing. Um, Training Mind, Body and Heart for Childbirth and Beyond by Nancy Bardake. Bar Bar and this has the process of birth with mindfulness in mind. I never practiced mindfulness and I didn't really do that either because this is supposed to, you're just supposed to follow a sort of program with exercises and stuff. I didn't do any of these things, but it was still very useful. So I don't know if I'm like, I didn't do things as I was supposed to be doing them. So I'm not maybe the best person to recommend this book again, but I think it was so useful. Um, it taught me to stay in the moment and just be mindful, of course, of my of my body and all the parts of my body. Um, and so, yeah, I think both of these books were amazing um, and really like effectively helped me during labor. So yeah, enough about my birth. Um, I also read, um, of course, a Montessori book, which I'm just going to mention. Um, this is, I don't know if it's like the child's mind. I don't know, because of course I had this in Italian. It was amazing. A five star rate, I think. Five or four, I don't know. She's always the best. Um, and I read it a long time ago, but I don't really know what to say because I feel like I'm always repeating myself with, with the Montessori books. I just, I love her point of view, which is through the child really she helps you get inside the child's mind and i think this is the best way to approach parenting knowing what your child is going through and how a child reacts a certain way um what why a child reacts uh, a certain way um and how their mind works just brilliant and i'm gonna put the book the english translation because i'm sure there is an english translation of this one um which is heavily tapped because perfection um and then i read i think this i read in the new year but still i'm gonna just pile all the books about parenting and such now here so that if you're not interested in these kinds of things you can go um uh, this is the Montessori baby. This is trans um, this is an English book, but it was translated into Italian, and I have the Italian version just because I want to have um, most of these books. I prefer to have in Italian so I can lend them to people and just reference it more easily. Um, but I already had the Montessori toddler, and I wanted since I have a baby now, I wanted this one, uh, which is the Montessori baby. This is a very practical book that talks about the Montessori method and also and how to apply um, the method in the house, how to um, arrange uh, the rooms and how to prepare activities, uh, what can you expect from each phase that you, your child goes through. Um, so yeah, I was interested in approaching the Montessori method from a very young age. Um, and this one disappointed me a little bit just because I felt like it was a bit too long probably for what it was trying to, to do because a, you, there's not a lot of things you can do with a baby, obviously. Um, this is supposed to be like from birth, even from before, like from pregnancy up until the child is one year old. Um, and I just feel like they needed to, they wanted to fill the books with 
notions and stuff that they had and they because it's by Simone Davies and Jennifer Uzodike and yeah they just I felt like they they um they should stick to the Montessori method and not talk about other things I don't know how to explain it um she they were talking about the, how babies uh, work and they were saying things that I that are not correct also we're saying some things that don't have to do with the Montessori method and when you put Montessori on the front I expect you to be faithful to the method and when you when you branch into your personal sort of opinion then it's not a Montessori approach it's just your opinion but you're putting it in a Montessori book and people who buy it will think well that's what it's supposed to be you know that's what Montessori thought about I don't know for example um, children sleeping uh, the sleep there's there's like a, a chapter about sleep and no I just I don't feel like they they are entitled to give you sleep um, training or sleep advice sleep, uh, so yeah I didn't like that and I felt like they ran out of things to say but it was useful uh, so I didn't completely dislike it then I read a couple of books on siblings um, so first a book in Italian that is not translated so I'm not gonna spend a long time talking about this it was all right it was um, a book by Giorgia Cotta and it's just like welcome baby brother ba ba and welcome baby sister um, yeah it was not that useful it didn't tell me anything new um, didn't really help that much um, but it was you know a nice reading experience so I don't dislike this book and I would recommend it to people that have no idea I have no clue how to navigate having two children which I'm not claiming that I am but I researched before this book already about having you know two kids having siblings and I do have a sibling myself which I know that doesn't make me an expert at all but you know this just didn't add anything um to my knowledge basically but there were some um like personal experiences here which were interesting so there's that and then i read a book that was a bit more useful which is siblings without rivalry by how to help your children live together so you can live too by adele faber and elaine maslish and I read um, another book with these two authors, I think, How to Listen So Children Can Talk, How to Talk So, ch so Children Will Listen, I don't know. Another book that was excellent and this one was good. Um, the only problem with this book is that it is aimed at um, older children, so when your children start interacting, like what, as a new parent I don't think it's that useful um, because I just wanted something immediate like when she's born how am I going to manage and the truth is you don't and whatever book you read it's gonna be hard for the first month or two at least uh, like having a routine having it was hard um, but and this I'm sure is going to be super useful when they grow up a little bit and so I will have to reread it because I already forgot everything so yeah, uh, last book I'm going to talk about is a book that I recently, very recently finished uh, and it was excellent and it is Safe Infant Sleep, Expert Answers to Your Co-Sleeping Questions by James J. McKenna. This was such a good read. Um, it is so well researched, very honest about even the fact that this um, field of co-sleeping um, is not there is not enough data basically to have really um, precise information uh, so it's very honest about that but also it's very well researched and the data that is here is all very um, trustworthy that's what I would say so there is a lot of misconceptions about sleeping with with kids uh, with babies especially um, and I know that it depends from the country you're in but this is like US centric but it still applies to Italy where I live 
because um, anywhere you go they tell you that it's not safe to co-sleep basically well no that's not true um, as it says here it's safe to co-sleep meaning you sleep in the same room but it's not safe to bed share when you have a baby because you could crush the baby you could hurt the baby you could I don't know whatever but that's not true and I wish that there was more information about how to bed share safely because people are going to do it anyway because that's what we're programmed to do especially if you're breastfeeding um, and I know this is actually very um, concentrate it concentrates on on um, breastfeeding too so if you're not breastfeeding it's different but you know we were wired to breastfeed our babies whatever the outcome i know that people there are people that can't breastfeed i'm not judging on anyone here i'm just stating what's uh, what's true the human species that's how we evolved we breastfeed our babies that's what we do um and when you breastfeed you need to be able to do it even during the night you need to be taught how to do that safely because we have beds with like maybe super soft mattresses um, with a lot of cushions and blankets and stuffed toys and stuff and, and such and we need to know how to prevent um, the baby from suffocating from sudden infant death syndrome is that how you call it yes um, we need to know how to do that safely because there are ways to do that safely. There are like a few rules that you need to follow and then you're gonna be able to, as the author says, to breast sleep, um, which, means, which means that you can also sleep while you breastfeed, which is something that a lot of moms do, I do it. Um, and I was terrified with my first baby. I didn't sleep with him for the first sort of three or four, well, even five or six months. Um, because I felt like I could hurt him accidentally. Um, but now um, I felt more confident because one, because it was the second child and two, because this book really helped um, solidify my feelings and my thoughts about breastfeeding and sleeping um, and bed sharing. So yeah, if you are interested in the topic, I suggest you pick up this one because it's super useful and it talks about how children sleep. I really, really recommend this book um, for anyone who's interested in how babies sleep as well. Even if you don't plan on on, on um, bed sharing or co-sleeping or whatever, I think you should read this book because scientifically it talks about how children sleep um, and what they need basically when they're sleeping um, and how it's not weird if they're sleeping in your room especially because yeah i mean it depends from the country you're in but here you still babies are expected to be sleeping in the room by the time they're like i don't know um six months or even one year old i still sleep with all of my children i still sleep with my older one as well and we are thriving so yeah you can do that it's not wrong if you want your child for whatever reason in the other room it's okay um, but still it's not weird if children sleep with their parents babies sleep with their parents um, we're animals so yeah and I want to leave you with this quote that is in this book which is the great enemy of truth is very often not the lie deliberate contrived and dishonest but the myth persistent persuasive and unrealistic too often we hold fast to the cliches of our forebears. We subject all facts to a prefabricated set of interpretations. We enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. And this was uh, President John F. Kennedy. Very good quote. Um, I stand by it. And yeah, that's it. This video was an absolute mess. You can tell that I haven't been filming videos for a very long time it's gonna be a nightmare to edit but i did it she didn't wake up so we're good i'll see you in my next video thank you for watching um see you soon bye